want to tie for you today a uh, finesse, finesse horn with a skirt. Um, you've seen these things. It's on a it's a Ned rig, uh, and it's used for bass. Typically, you see it with a senyo worm and a hook, jig hook. Well, this one is made out of a furled worm. Furled worm is basically what it is on a net a jet net hook, and it works really well in the reservoir there, reservoir where I'm at. We start with a 32 one thirty second of an ounce um, Gamagatsu uh, tube bait hook, and I've got here is uh, Danville three aught olive thread. Now I've taken some. I've got some chenille here. This is um, chocolate chenille, finesse body chenille, and I've stripped off a half inch down to the core. I've got three different colors. I've got it in uh, chartreuse. Oh, excuse me, olive, olive brown, and black. And I am placing it right above, beep, above the point of the hook. And I'm really got to wrap it down because I'm going to. Um, twist this sucker. Now the length of that chenille is uh, uh, 11 and a half inches long and then I'll get a worm that's anywhere from four to five inches long after I do all the furling. So right now I've tied it in. I gotta really nail it down because I'm gonna twist the heck out of that um, out of those three pieces of chenille. Now what I do initially is I'll gather all three of those, right now I'm going to glue it in, but I'm going to gather all three pieces of those chenille in a dubbing uh, twister and with an alligator clip on it. But after a while it's not strong enough, it'll come out of the draws. So what I do is just take a pair of hemostats and clamp all three pieces together and continue the twist. Now I will twist it, I'm going to even up the ends, I will twist, twist in a clockwise fashion because that's also how I wrap around the hook. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get these to expand out. The biggest thing you're going to do when you twist this stuff is you're going to try to get it to flare, make the uh, little tinsel pieces flare out and mix together. Now I should warn you I'm going to also, so you don't have to watch the whole piece of it, I'm going to also um, speed up certain sections. So this first section is only the uh, chenilles about 11, 11 and a half, 11, and a, 11 to 12 inches long. And you'll see me twisting it. And what I'm looking for right here, right now, is just for it to do it evenly, to see where the knots are. What I'm actually looking for it to do, it it'll it'll uh, double up on itself from the twisting, and I do that also because then I get a stiffer worm. I've found, I've actually gone to 15 inches, and I get about a 6 inch worm, but this works out just fine. What's The reason for the 30 seconds is because uh, I can still cast it legitimately with a 5, five weight rod. I'm usually, usually, usually using a 6 weight, but I'm, you can cast it with a 5 weight, even a 4, because the weight's so negligible. And it sits on, it rides on its head, and then I jig it back. You'll see this portion of it I've sped up. But see how I get a nice, nice, man, a variegation in there. And see how it's, you can start to see where it's doubling up on itself. I'm trying to spread those knots throughout that whole core. Now I can make it knot up just by holding a portion of it and letting it, it, not up below that piece. And I'll actually stretch it out or put a lot of tension on it and, 
and pull out those knots so I get the knots where I want so it's evened out. And I'm just using a dumb brush to push flare it out better. You see I've taken that, uh, you can see I've taken those hemostats. That's the only way. And I'm about to, I'm measuring to find out where the middle section is. I'm just using a hook from a dubbing loop twister. Now I found it and I'm going to tie it in. So I've doubled up, doubled up, doubled the the worm body up against itself, and I'm using the hook to get it to twist up on itself. I don't; it doesn't need much encouragement. It does it almost automatically. And see how I'm twisting it together? Yeah. Now I'm going to really nail it now, obviously, or it'll come apart. And I'll trim off that, I'm going to trim off that excess. Now you can see I'm using some synthetic scissors because this chenille just, just chews up your nice scissors. It, it, it just, it's hard on nice scissors. And so the chenille, the, the uh, synthetic scissors are better to use. Now... I'm going to create another furled worm or body section and it's I've got six inch I'll have th once again I'll have six uh, three six inch pieces of finesse chenille in the three different colors see right there I'm just trying to get it to even out Nail that glue. This is not your normal glue. This is your modeling glue that you get from a hobby store. And it's a much better glue than, say, um, Zap a Gap. At least for this. So I'm going to, and I'm going to pull out three pieces of body chenille. And once again, strip off the last half inch so I can tie it in. I uh, came up with this because I have uh, the um, bass guys, the gear guys in my lake um, get frustrated and they come around in my area where I'm fishing and I'm off of a float tube. But I've had a lot of success and they come over and they, you know, they're supposed to stay 50 yards away, but they don't. So I let them, I just ignore them, except for I then take this worm and throw it at their boat and then proceed to catch fish underneath their kayaks, which I think is great sport. <laughs> now I have thrown them heavier with the heavier jig heads, but man, I don't even trust it. I don't even want to think about what that heavy jig head, and we're talking quarter ounce, quarter ounce, one eighth ounce. I can't Imagine what that would do to my rod if it hit, hit my rod. You would just basically lob it. But I like to throw the this uh, fly what, 80 feet easily. And then let it get settled to the bottom and then jig, jig it back to me from the dam out. out. And it fishes really well. <laughs> I should say I got this idea from basically two different places. I got this from uh, Jay Zimmerman and his furled worm, and also from my buddy, uh, Roy Coburn, who used to be a guide out at Quincy.
See, I'm stripping off the tinsel portion of it. And I've got that half inch. Just a little bit of dab of glue. I'll gather those pieces up and do the same thing. I'm just going to trim them so they're all the same length. Well, I'm not going to trim them. <laughs> Now I begin, once again, begin to twist. Now I don't let this stuff double over on itself, mainly because my core is really stiff and I'm just going to use it to wrap. Now I've sped up this section. I just love the way this, the color of this sucker comes out. Nothing in nature is one color. And so this variegation just goes, looks gorgeous. Now I'm wrapping. And this is around the body of the hook, the shank of the hook. And I'm going to tie it in. Even with the three odd, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this sucker and it broke on me, but yeah, that's normal. Now for the skirt, I'm going to use um, spade plumes. You can also use Marabou's Perfect also, or you can add a synthetic into it also. So don't limit yourself. I just happen to have a lot of the spade plumes and I have it in the three different colors. Touch more glue and nail that sucker in. Now I've got three pieces. Oh, wait a minute. This is the fun part. You can spend hours <laughs> trimming off this stuff. And I've got a catch basket underneath me as well as our garbage can. And I've got a vacuum cleaner close by. So, and this tinsel, if you've ever played with it, it sticks to everything.
And this is the only thing I hate about this. This and the same thing with the game changers when you use a chenille. It just gets everywhere. And it's just like deer hair. It's just all over the place. You can see me just, I'm just going to crop it way, way down. Now, some of the colors that I'll use is I'll go chartreuse or straight chartreuse and a little brown, or I'll go straight black works really, really well. Or I'll mix like olive and then olive brown. But my best is this color here, this olive brown, olive, and black. And then, of course, the black. Black's always going to work or straight olive. And the trick to this is just to cut it way down. Just, just trim it the heck. I probably could have sped up this section, but I wanted to give you a feel for how long it takes to trim this baby down. This is the hardest part, but also the easiest part because you don't, you're not like on a game changer, you're trying to get a shape. This thing is just, you're just trying to get a really thin profile cylinder. So it's not so much about getting a shape so much as just trimming it all down and brushing it out. I'm just trying to get the uh, chenille to flare out and then pull off the longer hairs. Now I put the fly back in my vise. <laughs> I'm still looking for loose hairs. But I'm going to create a dubbing loop.
And I've got a, a multi-clamp that I've got three different colors of, of uh, spay plumes in. I use a touch of, um, this is Overton's. I love Overton's, but I cheat. I take the Overton's and I melt it down and I add a little bit of another kind of Shane Stallcup's favorite wax. It's a little softer. And so I get the perfect mix. Now this is black, chartreuse, and olive brown. And I've spread it out. I've got a pretty dense brush here, but, and I probably should go, I should probably go a little lighter, but, and this works out just fine. This stuff in the water, when that flies sitting, just sitting, just reacts to any kind of water current or movement and then when you move it it streamlines and then it puffs out again it just got all kinds of motion Brush it back. Nail it down. And now I'm just going to oh, pick it out a little bit and seal the deal just trim the excess little shorties and add a little bit of glue I just want to make a comment regarding the hooks you can find a lot of jig hooks but they aren't they don't hold up. The Gamagatsus, they cost, they're expensive. It's like, what, a buck a piece. But that hook holds up and it is sharp as heck and it'll drive through the jaw of a small or a large mouth. Those other hooks, I've gone cheap before where you can get like a hundred for twenty bucks. Ah, oh, great price. Great look. But boy, it just does not hold up. Thanks for watching. Try this out. You might be just surprised how well it works with a fly rod. Thank you.